Hello and welcome back to another episode in my UE4 tutorials. Uh, in this episode we're going to do uh, something a bit different and that is uh, object labelling. So basically you see in some games where if you walk up to near an object it will hover the name of the object above the object's head or the character or anything like that. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. So what I'm using today is this battery object for now but you can use whatever you like. So I'm going to open up my battery object that I've got here. Okay, uh, nothing extra yet, it's just a normal battery object. If you followed my uh, flashlight tutorial, it's just the same thing as that. So, this object here, um, we're going to add a label above it. So, uh, let's do that. So, let's add a component and you want to type in text render. Okay, and there's your text render. So, you're going to move it to where roughly you want it. So I went above my object and I want it to be centered. So I'm going to change my horizontal alignment over here in the details panel to center. Excellent. Okay, that's the first thing. Um, once I've got that, um, I need to set a variable for the object name that I want it to appear. So in the variable list in the bottom left, I'm going to click on the plus variable and I'm going to type in here object name. So the type of variable you want is not a boolean, and it's not a string either. You want it to be text, okay? Because this is going to be rendered out onto a screen, we need it to be a text um, variable. And you also want it to be editable. So tick on the editable, and then click compile. So the editable checkbox allows it to be edited in the, en in the engine before you compile the whole entire game out. So it makes things uh, a lot nicer for you to just drag in objects and start naming them inside the engine without having to deal with extra files or um, in uh, trying to do stuff in game or in code. It makes it a lot simpler. So I'm going to see here where it says default value. If it says if it doesn't have this, click compile and it will appear. I'm going to give it a placeholder name. So I'm going to do underscore ph. Okay, and that now means that my default value for the name of all objects will be underscore ph so if the if the game design doesn't name it anything that's what's going to show up okay you can leave that blank if you wish but for demonstration purposes i thought i'd show it okay so now the trick is to hook up this variable object name to this text render so it displays here so two things uh, we can actually get to the show in the engine if we like and you do that using construction script. So if you click on this tab here on the construction script. So the construction script is kind of special in that it allows you to do uh, run blueprint codes inside the engine. Okay, it allows you to uh, run blueprints inside the engine. So you can uh, edit stuff uh, almost procedurally. Okay. So we can use it for a very simple purpose today and that is to hook up the variable here to the text render here. So I'm going to click on my text render and drag out construction script and I'm going to type in set text and you'll see set text render. And that's where you hooked up to that component. And now you can see here it requires a value. That simply is just the object name. You drag out, get and hook it up. Click compile. Now if I go to my viewport, you'll see the placeholder text appear. And that will also work inside the engine. So if I close this, you can see it's there. I'm going to drag out another one, like so. I can actually, let's go on the other side, so it's the right way around. You can see it's underscore ph, but I can name it over here. Because it's editable, I can name it over here. So I can name it after my Twitter handle. And there it is. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to uh, now go back to my battery object. So that was the construction script. Now we need to get it to do the same thing in game. But what I want it also to do is to sh only show when the player is near it. Plus, I want it to rotate the text to face the player at all times. So quite a few things there. So the way we do that is uh, not that actually that difficult. So first thing we need to do is do detect how far away the player is from the actual actor. Now the way you do that is you have to get the location of the actor and the location of the player. So if you first of all right click and say get uh, 
player character and then off of there do get actor location okay and you want to do another get actor location this time not connected to anything and so this one gets the player location this one gets the location of this battery object this current actor so I've got two vectors here so the yellow uh, pins mean vectors I'm going to drag this one out and do a minus and do vector minus vector and hook that one up to that side so I'm taking away the location data of one from the location data of the other and to make it simple for us to understand if you drag out of the vector output of the, the sum here we can now type in uh, vector length and that returns a float value determining the distance between those two points and now we can do some tests so now we can check how far away it actually is so off of here I'm going to do it's less than float versus float and I'll type in the value of 300 and this spits out a boolean which we know can hook up to a branch so up it goes to a branch now all of this requires an event so the event we're going to do is a tick a tick event happens all the time so it's constantly checking all of this stuff off okay so in the tick event it's checking the distance between the two actors if it's less than 300 units then it'll go true or vice false so if it's true i want to set the visibility of the text render to true by ticking this box and if it's false set visibility to text render to false leaving that is now i don't like I'm, I'm quite ocd about this so i don't like it having two references to text render here so i usually delete one bring this one down and hook it up to this one as well just looks neater okay but you may not be as anal as i am so here we go so that will toggle the visibility of that and we can actually test that now if we compile it and push play there's my batteries we'll go up to it it will now only show the text when I'm near it okay so we're halfway there the next step is to make it so the text will rotate and show and face the, uh, the player at all times so after set visibility uh, the way you do this is you get the rotation data of the player and match it to the rotation data of the text render so we're going to first of all get uh oh sorry go in here and go set rotation and you'll see rotation for the text render where is it set world rotation text render okay and uh, so we need to set an, a new rotation for this as i said we need to uh, compare the rotation of the player to the rotation of this box first and then make it look at it okay so if you drag off the new rotation and type in look and you see here look at rotation so find look at rotation takes two vectors and it will find the angle to rotate this object towards the player so the starting point will be the current battery actor so here i'm going to type in here get actor uh, oh, get actor uh, row. No, what's going on here? Oh, get actor location. Sorry, my bad. Location. And the target will be the player's location. So get actor location. But the target will be the player. So drag off the there. Get player character. So we're getting the character of the player's character, get its location, get the location of the battery, finding a look at rotation. So this function spits out a rotation of this versus this, and it's going to set it into the world rotation of the text render component. Click compile. Now, hopefully if we've done it right, click play. Yes, you see it now rotates and follows the player wherever they 
go. And I walk away, turns off. Perfect. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions about this, uh, I went over some fairly new stuff with the construction script and the text render stuff. Uh, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you like this, please give it a like, give it a share, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.